Hello friends, this video on motion and time part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So now we will quickly look at some of the questions. Question number one. Classify the following as motion along a straight line, circular or oscillatory motion. So just to remind you, motion in a straight line, that is rectilinear motion. Motion in a circular path, something like this. And oscillatory motion, to and fro motion, like this. The pendulum motion. Motion of your hands while running. So when you run, what happens to your hands? They do not move along a straight path. They just comes forward, goes backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. So it is like a periodic motion. So it is like an oscillatory motion. Motion of a horse pulling a cart on a straight road. Now since the road is straight, so obviously the horse will be pulling the cart also on the straight road, which is going to be a rectilinear motion or straight line motion. So this is going to be straight. Motion of a child in a merry-go-round. So merry-go-round is like moving in circles. So it is circular motion. Motion of a child on a seesaw. What is seesaw? Have you seen this? Uh, you have a pivot in between and this is how it is. So you have a seat here. You have another seat here. So one person seats, sits here. The other person sits here. So wherever the weight is heavy, it goes down. And again, this goes up. When it goes down, this goes up. So that, that's the seesaw. So what kind of motion do you see in a seesaw? So that is again oscillatory motion. So it comes up, comes down, comes up, comes down. So it gets repeated in periodic intervals. Motion of the hammer of an electric bell. So in electric bell, whenever you push the bell, so that hammer, it starts vibrating. So vibration is nothing but again, it is a type of oscillatory motion. So this is oscillatory motion. Motion of a train on a straight bridge. So the, when the bridge is straight, obviously the train is also going to move on the straight path. So it is again a straight line motion. Question number two, which of the following are not correct? The basic unit of time is second. Yes, that is true. Second is the basic unit of time. Every object moves with a constant speed. No, this is false. This is not correct because different objects have different speeds and it is not necessary that the speed will remain the same. That is where comes the concept of non-uniform motion. That is sometimes the object is moving very slowly. Sometimes the object is moving very fast. So basically what's happening? At different intervals of time, the speed is changing. Distances between two cities are measured in kilometers. Yes, that is true because the two cities are quite far apart. So they need a bigger unit of distance and kilometer is a bigger unit of distance. The time period of a given pendulum is not constant. What is time period? It is the time taken to complete one oscillation. So let's say this is the pendulum. This is the mean position. It moves to the extreme position, comes back, passes through the mean position, goes to the other extreme position and comes back. So this is one oscillation and the time taken to complete this one oscillation is called time period. And for any pendulum, the time period will remain constant. So the time period will not change. The time period is only dependent on the length of the pendulum. So when you are talking about a given pendulum, so the length always remains the same because it is the same pendulum we are talking about and therefore the time period also remains constant. So this statement is false. The speed of a train is expressed in meters per hour. The speed is generally expressed either in kilometer per hour or in meter per second. So this statement is also false. Question number three. A simple pendulum takes 32 seconds to complete 20 oscillations. What is the time period of the pendulum? So what is time period? As I said, it is the time taken for one oscillation. So here in the question, we see that for 20 oscillations, it takes 32 seconds. Therefore, for one oscillation, it would take 32 by 20 seconds. 
which would come out to be 1.6 seconds. So therefore 1.6 seconds is the time period of the pendulum. Question number four. The distance between two stations is 240 km. A train takes four hours to cover this distance. Calculate the speed of the train. So these are the two stations and the distance between them is 240 kilometers. So this is point A, this is station B. And the time taken to cover this is four hours. So the speed would be equal to distance traveled divided by time taken. So distance traveled is 240 kilometers and time taken is four hours. So this is going to be 60. So the speed of the train would be 60 kilometers per hour. Question number five. The odometer of a car reads 57321 kilometer when the clock shows the time 8.30 a.m. What is the distance moved by the car if at 8.50 a.m. the odometer reading has changed to 57336 kilometers. So here let's take the help of the distance time graph. So let's say we denote time on the x-axis and distance on the y-axis. So we say that we have noted the reading of the car odometer. What does odometer do? Odometer tells the total distance traveled so far. So when the time was 8.30 a.m., we noted the odometer reading and we noted the odometer reading also at 8.50 a.m. So at 8.30 a.m., the odometer reading was... How much? It was 57321. And at 8.50 a.m. it had increased and the value was 57336. So we have to calculate the distance moved by the car from this time to this time. So how much is the time duration? So here it was 8.30. Here the time was 8.50. So that means basically the time was 20 minutes. So in these 20 minutes, how much distance was traveled? So the distance traveled was this much distance, correct? So the time period, time for which we are talking about, so that time is 20 minutes. So in 20 minutes, what was the distance covered? So the distance covered was 57336 minus 57321, which is equal to 15 kilometers. So this is the distance moved by the car during this time. Now we also have to calculate the speed of the car in kilometers per minute. So the speed of the car would be equal to distance traveled by time taken. So 15 divided by 20 which is equal to 0 0.75 kilometers per minute. Express the speed in kilometers per hour also. So 1 minute is equal to 1 divided by 60 hours. So this would be 1 by 60, this much kilometer per hour. So it is basically 0 0.75 into 60 kilometer per hour. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.